Mercedes-Benz E-Class has a reputation for button-down efficiency. It's one continued by this vastly improved 8th generation version, which retains a sensible side but dials up the desirability, aiming to offer a smarter, more prestigious approach to executive class motoring than its closest German rivals. It does so with efficient engines, astonishing technology and comfort that makes you question the need for a larger luxury saloon. No car epitomizes what Mercedes-Benz stands for better than this one, the E-Class. We've known it by that name since 1986, but the history of this model actually dates all the way back to 1953 and the introduction of the original W120 series design, uh, widely recognized as the brand's first truly modern motor car. And this model has remained truly modern throughout the eight generations since, pioneering everything from safety passenger cell technology to turbo diesel engines. Innovation that continues in this much improved W212 series version, the uh, most comprehensively revised Mercedes-Benz ever. And it needs to be. Much, after all, has happened in the executive saloon sector since this Mark 8 Model E class was first introduced here back in 2009, with all new versions of both its main competitors, the BMW 5 Series and the Audi A6, as well as stronger opposition from lower volume segment rivals like Jaguar's XF and the Lexus GS. No longer was it enough for Stuttgart's most important car to be merely big, refined, efficient and classy. Extra technology was needed and a bit of extra character too, both of which are apparently provided by the vastly improved 8th generation version introduced early in 2013. The car we're going to test here. You'll recognise it by its more curvaceous nose, but beyond the smarter look lie the more important state-of-the-art virtues this E-Class will need if it's to continue to be its maker's most profitable model. As before, its market appeal will be vast, with private buyers the focus of pretty coupe and cabriolet versions, and the far larger business sector targeted by the saloon and estate variants we're going to talk about here. One of these must be almost all things to all commercial people, as appealing to, say, a taxi operator in ordinary base diesel form, as in higher spec it will be to a top executive. It must, in short, be a very thoroughly developed product indeed. Let's put it to the test. Some full-size executive saloons claim to be sporty, BMW's 5 Series, Jaguar's XF. Others, like this one, simply don't feel the need to try that hard, unless an AMG V8 happens to beat beneath the bonnet. It doesn't here. Like almost all E-Class buyers, I've chosen a diesel, but rather a nice one. The top 252 brake horsepower V6 E350 Bluetech. Assuming you've not had the minor lottery win that would open up ownership of the top 5.5 litre E63 AMG turbocharged petrol flagship, then the car I've got here represents the sole high performance option in the range. 620 Newton metres of torque, hurling you to 62 miles an hour in 6.6 .6 seconds, en route to an artificially limited 155 miles an hour maximum. But would you really want to go that fast in an E-Class? Well, should the need arise, surprisingly these days, you just might. Dynamically, you see, this car is much improved over the original version of the same design that we first saw back in 2009. For a start, all models uh, get an improved direct control suspension setup with selective damping, which is further firmed up on AMG Sport models like the one that I'm driving here. So the rear wheel drive chassis actually feels unexpectedly responsive when you pitch the car into a tight corner, especially if, as here, your car is fitted with the optional airmatic air suspension setup with adaptive damping and you've switched off the magic carpet comfort mode via this button here in favour of sport. 
So you need to spend some extra money if you really want a dynamic drive. But then to be fair, that's also the case with this car's two closest rivals, BMW's 5 Series and Audi's A6. Traditionally, the advantage with both of these cars was that you actually felt something back from their steering systems through the corners, in contrast to the vague old rack provided on the original version of this car. Mercedes, though, has caught up a bit with this revised version, fitting a direct steering system that more accurately varies the level of assistance to the speed that you're driving at. It's still not especially rewarding, but it is an improvement. If you're fortunate enough to drive a top E63 AMG V8 model though with its electromechanical speed sensitive AMG steering, you can see just how much better it could be. The same applies to the gearbox, the 7G Tronic Plus 7 speed transmission all mainstream E-Class models use is smooth but not especially responsive unless you use the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Switch to an E63 and its AMG Speedshift MCT 7 speed sports automatic setup and you'll see how much better a Mercedes Auto Box can be. Talking of the E63, that model's bi-turbo V8 comes with either 557 or 585 brake horsepower, but it only comes with two-wheel drive. The desirable 4x4 E63 variant unfortunately can't be engineered in right-hand drive form. Now this top V8 AMG version sits at the top of a slim down petrol powered E-Class range that's now based around a 2 litre turbocharged engine rather than the previous 1.8 and a rather clever one too with direct injection and twin scroll turbocharging. This efficient blue direct unit comes in two different states of tune with even the base E200 offering 184 brake horsepower good for 62 miles an hour in 7.9 seconds on the way to 145 miles an hour. Beyond that, the Pokia E250 has 211 brake horsepower and improves those figures to 7.4 seconds and 151 miles an hour. Not bad for a car able to return nearly 50 miles to the gallon in normal use. That might make you think twice about choosing one of the 2.1 litre diesels that almost all UK E-Class buyers tend to want, but probably not for very long. There's 30% more pulling power on offer from the two four-cylinder CDI units, with the 400 newton metres available from the 170 brake horsepower E220 CDI, enough to get it uh, to 62 miles an hour in 8.7 seconds on the way to 141 miles an hour. With 204 brake horsepower on tap, the Pokia E250 CDI improves those figures to 7.5 seconds and 150 miles an hour. Exactly the same turn of speed, in fact, as you'll get from probably the most interesting variant in this revised E-Class lineup, the diesel electric E300 Bluetech Hybrid. This shares the E250 CDI's same 204 brake horsepower diesel engine, but adds a 27 brake horsepower electric motor to it, so that manoeuvring, parking and setting off on modest throttle loads for up to two thirds of a mile are all conducted exclusively using power from the 19 kilowatt lithium ion battery. The diesel engine also switches itself off when coasting at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour truly future-proofed executive motoring. Mercedes is usually careful not to meddle too fundamentally with the things that define its most popular products, especially when it comes to aesthetics. Here, it's different. E-Class customers who previously defined this car by its twin headlamp setup and that prominent three-pointed star atop the traditional upright lamella grille must now get used to quite a different look. The traditional bonnet mascot's gone, replaced by a larger brand badge in the centre of a more prominent front grille flanked by a redesigned pair of curvaceously flowing headlamps. These now operate within a single lens that incorporates flowing light elements intended to maintain the typical four-eyed look that has come to characterise this car. The swept-back bonnet has also been restyled so that its contours merge elegantly with the smart and front end, while at the side the shape appears to have been stretched 
thanks to a sharper crease line beginning on the rear doors and extending into the tail lights. These have also been smartened with a two-tone look and LED technology that offers up a distinctive nighttime visual signature. We're talking then of a package of changes that go a bit further than you'd expect from a mid-term facelift, an approach that continues on inside. Slip behind the wheel and smarter materials with meticulous detailing serve to raise the perceived quality and functionality of this car. There's a redesigned centre console too with extra storage space making up for the fact that the door pockets are as small as ever. As before, you sit quite low and you'd be excused for some initial confusion with all the stalks, paddles and buttons that need to be mastered on the Nappa leather covered multifunction steering wheel, along with the endless menus of the standard command infotainment system whose seven inch color screen dominates the top of the dash. But you quickly adjust, not only to these, but also to familiar E-Class anomalies like the foot-operated parking brake and the steering column mounted gear stick. And once you have, you set to more readily appreciate ergonomic design that's just that bit more special this time round. Perhaps it's the lovely analog clock positioned between a smarter set of dash top vents or the tight, precise panel gaps, or maybe the Artico stitched leather trim on the dashboard and the belt line of the doors. Moving to the back, the large door aperture aids easy entry. And once inside, headroom is good, though there's not quite as much rear legroom as the car's dimensions might suggest. It's quite enough for long distance comfort though, provided you're not stuck in the middle where you've to straddle a prominent prop shaft tunnel. Out back, the 540 litre boot is slightly bigger than you'll find in a BMW 5 Series, an Audi A6 or a Jaguar XF. And for not much extra, you can have it with this neat pull down easy pack boot box. Unfortunately, the option to extend this boot area with a 60-40 split folding rear bench is an expensive extra. Still, if that's something you're likely to be doing on a regular basis, you'd be better off looking at the spacious estate version, which ups luggage capacity to a 695 litre total, extendable to 1,950 litres by flattening the back seat. That's significantly more than rival BMW 5 Series Touring and Audi A6 Avant models can offer. You're probably likely to be paying somewhere in the 35 to 45,000 pound bracket for your E-Class once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras. If you'd like the extra practicality of the estate version with its standard self-leveling rear suspension for heavy loads, then you'll need to allow an extra 1,800 pounds over the cost of an equivalent saloon. These two body styles are our focus here, but just for reference, the model for model premium to go from a four door like this to a sleeker E-Class coupe with the same engine will be anything between 1,600 and 2,600 pounds, depending on the variant that you're looking at. It's much more than that in the case of the desirable Cabriolet version, allow a premium of around 5,000 pounds. As for engines, well, sophisticated though the direct injection 2 litre petrol turbo units used in the E200 and E250 models are, only around 10% of UK buyers choose them. You can see why, given that the premium to upgrade to the Torquia 2.1 litre turbo diesel used in the volume E220 CDI and E250 CDI variants is so marginal. The 204 brake horsepower unit used in the Pokia of these two is also found in the diesel electric E300 Bluetech hybrid version, which, if you've a £40,000 budget, makes an intriguing alternative to the similarly priced V6 diesel that I've been trying here in this E350 Bluetech. The wildly powerful V8 petrol 5.5 litre E63 AMG saloon and estate models really are a separate entity entirely, priced in the 75 to 85,000 pound bracket. So how does all this stack up against obvious rivals? Well, 
it'll probably simplify things to know that unless you're talking about really low volume players in this segment, cars like the Lexus GS, the Infiniti Q50, the Volvo S80, the Chrysler 300C or the Maserati Ghibli, there really are only three alternatives to this car. BMW's also improved F10 generation 5 series, the fourth generation Audi A6 and the Jaguar XF. It will take a few hundred pounds, all are priced pretty much identically to each other in diesel form. Bear in mind though that the diesel electric version of this Mercedes, the E300 Bluetech Hybrid, is unique in its segment. The hybrid alternatives from BMW and Audi are less frugal petrol electric setups and cost substantially more. If you are looking for petrol power in this sector, you'll find that with the exception of the rather inefficient and similarly priced Lexus GS250, only BMW's 520i and 528i models can offer a four-cylinder green pump alternative to the E-Class E200 and E250 variants. The 520i is about a thousand pounds less than a comparable E200, while the 528i is about a thousand pounds more than a comparable E250. But the Mercedes holds a decisive edge when it comes to running cost returns. That leaves only the top E63 AMG petrol V8 model to talk about. If you're looking at the saloon version, then this model's £75,000 budget will also buy you a comparably powerful BMW M5, but will save you around £5,000 over a rival Jaguar XFRS. Check out the V8 AMG Estate, and the only alternative is the equally rapid and very similarly priced Audi RS6 Avant. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an E-Class that you really want, then whichever mainstream saloon or estate variant you select, you're going to be deciding between two main trim levels, comfort-orientated SE or the firmer riding, more dynamic-looking AMG Sport spec that I have here. Go for a 2.1 litre diesel, a diesel hybrid or a 2 litre petrol model and you choose between these two levels. But E350 V6 diesel buyers are restricted just to AMG Sport. The ultimate AMG spec is of course reserved for the pricey E63 5.5 litre V8 models at the top of the range. It's best to think of the E-Class lineup as automatic only. Though a six-speed manual is nominally available on the entry-level E220 CDI, it doesn't really suit this Mercedes and will make your car very difficult to sell on, given that most future buyers will want the seamlessly smooth 7G Tronic Plus seven-speed auto box that you'll find on all other variants bar the V8 AMGs. As for the rest of the spec, well, there's more standard stuff included than perhaps you might expect. So the Tally runs to alloy wheels, rain sensing wipers, leather upholstery, cruise control, a leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel, an auto dimming rear view mirror, hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and an active park assist with Parktronic system that'll help you identify a parking space. Then if you wish, even steer the car into it for you. Most importantly for many business users, all models get a command infotainment system incorporating 3D satellite navigation, a DAB digital radio, a Bluetooth phone compatibility, a hard disk drive, in-car internet access and aux in, USB, iPod and SD card connectivity. Opt for the AMG Sport trim package I have here and you get a body styling pack, sports seats with special leather microfiber upholstery, studded aluminium pedals, and an AMG steering wheel. But the most important change is the adoption of a firmer version of the direct control suspension that all improved E-Class models now have. Combined with larger 18-inch wheels, this brings with it a firmer ride that not all owners will like. Those who object will either need to revert to a softer spec SE model or pay extra for an airmatic air suspension setup with adaptive damping that offers either sport or comfort modes so you can match the ride you get to the road you're on. While you're ticking options boxes, you might also want to consider the extra cost LED intelligent light system that I have here, which offers a brighter beam that adapts to the road that you're on. 
Other key additional cost items you could choose include a huge glass panoramic roof and a full house 14 speaker Harman Kardon premium surround sound system. Safety kit is predictably comprehensive and goes well beyond basics like twin front side and curtain airbags, the driver's knee bag, a pedestrian friendly bonnet, neck pro anti whiplash front head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring and Isofix child seat fastenings. So as standard there's a Prese Plus system that'll protect you if you're hit from the rear. There's an adaptive high beam assist plus setup that dips your headlights for you in the face of oncoming traffic at night. And there's an improved attention assist system that'll issue alerts if it thinks you're becoming fatigued. The really clever stuff though comes courtesy of a whole raft of safety ideas that Mercedes refers to as intelligent drive. Most of which rely on a clever stereo multi-purpose camera positioned here by the rear view mirror. All E-Class models get Collision Prevention Assist, which will scan the road ahead for a uh, potential nose to tail accident, warning you and priming the brakes if one is detected. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the car will automatically brake itself to reduce the severity of any potentially resulting collision. If you want to go further than that, then there's an optional driver assistance package of different functions that really puts that stereo camera to work. Pre-safe brake can automatically brake the car if you don't respond when a pedestrian strays into your path. Active lane keeping assist stops dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. Brake assist with junction assist works at junctions and roundabouts to warn and brake to avoid possible collisions from the side. And Distronic Plus with steering assist, well that keeps you from getting too close to the traffic ahead and helps to keep the car steering straight. This model series is designed for the long haul. There's plenty of proof of that. Greek taxi driver Gregorios Sakonidis clocked up 2.9 million miles in his 1976 240D and though build quality took a bit of a dip with the W120 series range we had between 1995 and 2003, it's now better than ever with this generation version. This car will easily outlast you. One reason why all important residual values have traditionally been strong with diesel and lower order petrol engines. Unless you do something silly like specify a manual gearbox or order an overly bright colour scheme, you can expect to get over 60% of your initial purchase price back after three years. All E-Class models except the V8s feature the Mercedes Blue Efficiency technology which includes a wide range of small modifications that together can deliver fuel consumption savings of up to 23%. Weight saving measures, aerodynamic improvements, fuel saving electronic direct steering and low rolling resistance tyres feature among the innovations. As a result, the volume E220 CDI diesel's four-cylinder 2.1-litre engine can return a combined cycle fuel economy figure of 58.9 miles to the gallon, whether you order it in manual or automatic guises that respectively deliver either 125 or 128 grams per kilometre of CO2. To give you some perspective, that's not quite as good as a directly comparable BMW 520D, but it's better than you get in a rival Audi A6 2 litre TDI or Jaguar XF 2.2 diesel 200 PS. From there on in the range, it's auto transmission only, and the same 2.1 litre diesel in the Pokia E250 CDI delivers 57.7 miles to the gallon and 131 grams per kilometre. In other words, very similar returns to the lower powered version of this engine. The V6 Bluetech diesel model that I'm driving here doesn't do quite as well as that, but still manages 47.1 miles to the gallon and 157 grams per kilometer. It's also a very clean power plant, thanks to a clever injection system that introduces AdBlue, an aqueous urea solution into the exhaust gas flow to increase ammonia. This then transforms 80% of the NOx nitrogen oxide emissions into harmless water and nitrogen. 
Low mileage buyers though should also consider the two litre petrol turbo four cylinder blue direct unit that's been introduced in E200 and E250 versions of this improved E-Class model. This is after all a very clever engine indeed. Not content with direct engine and twin scroll turbocharging, it also selects from three different fuel injection cycles depending on how it's being driven, including a world first stratified lean burn process that uses exhaust gas recirculation to maximum effect. The result, whichever of these two variants you choose, is 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 138 grams per kilometre of CO2. Pretty astonishing returns for a 1.7 tonne petrol powered executive saloon. Not as impressive though as the figures you'll get from the diesel electric E300 Bluetech Hybrid. It's got the same 204 brake horsepower diesel engine you'll find in the E250 CDI, developing the same performance. But the running cost returns are on a different level. 68.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and as little as 109 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's 15 to 20 percent better than a little 1.25 litre petrol Ford Fiesta can manage. What else? Well, servicing costs can be kept in check by an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when maintenance is due. Uh, then there's a comprehensive three year warranty that's built upon by Mercedes Mobilo scheme, which delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years, as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. Finally, insurance groupings range between 34 and 44 for mainstream models or up to 47 for the V8 AMG variants. Think of Mercedes and you might think of luxury limousines, glamorous roadsters, championship winning racing cars or unbreakable commercial vehicles. In fact though, this car, the E-Class, is actually the rock on which the brand is built and has been for over six decades. It hasn't always been the most inspiring choice in its sector, but legions of loyal owners have never minded that. Other directorship level models, they reason, might be slightly plusher or a little better to drive, but none has the sense of occasion that this one brings with it. You'll have worked hard to be in a position to enjoy a car like this and you need to feel rewarded when at last you take possession of the keys. Here you will be, it's as simple as that. And in a more efficient, smarter and more dynamic way at the wheel of this vastly improved 8th generation version. It's a car now able to make a much stronger case for itself, not just amongst the typical heartland of Mercedes customers, but also with younger buyers and those who would once have turned to a BMW for driving excellence and an Audi for design focus. What's more, it's managed this without diluting the very DNA that makes a Mercedes what it is. All of which means that if you've always wanted one, you've now more reasons than ever to wish upon a star.